All right. Now we are going to do Poincare Lindstedt method for the van der Poel oscillator. I'm going to start here with n equals 3. Omega, we have to stretch time, right? So this is omega now. Why are we stretching time? Because the van der Poel oscillator has a periodic solution. Unlike the simple pendulum or the undamped duffing, unforced duffing oscillator, um, it is not that every solution is a periodic solution. This one has a unique periodic solution. So if you fix epsilon, then the solution is unique up to phase. So you can start it at any time you like. For this reason, um, we and the time period is not uh, 2 pi. So uh, for this reason, we will stretch time and we will have to keep track of um, the uniqueness of the amplitude in what goes below. So because we can start the situation, the solution um, at uh, any time we want, I choose to start it at a point when x dot is 0. That means initial conditions for x0 dot, x1 dot, x2 dot and x3 dot will be 0. But the initial conditions for x0, x1, x2, they are not in our control. They are whatever the expansion tells us they have to be for the solution to exist because there is a special solution. Okay. So once again, we begin here. Then omega square times just x double dot. So here is omega square and x double dot. Here is epsilon omega, then x dot. You can recognize this is the van der Poel oscillator. I have not written tau. I have written t. But uh, this is the tau time in the sense that this time is omega times the original time. And omega is this. It depends on epsilon. It is something to be found. Okay. So here is my differential equation. Here is my assumed solution. You can see that I've gone up to third order. Start from the center. So I'm substituting this assumed solution into the differential equation. I'm expanding it. Then I'm Taylor expanding it. I'm stopping at n, dropping n plus 1 and converting to a polynomial. I can show you what the expression is. It's a bit long, but it's not terrible. Here is the order 1 part. Here is the order epsilon part. Here, going up to here is the order epsilon square part. Here, getting longer but still not horrible, is the order epsilon cube part and so on. Okay, so I've got my differential equation. And then, as I explained, I want x dot to be 0, but x, I don't know what it is. So I will just call it a cos t and wait to find out what a has to be in subsequent orders of the expansion. So I will substitute x0 is a cos t. I'll call that substitution temp. I'll call that equation temp. I'll substitute temp into xa, which is my assumed solution. And I will substitute it into my differential equation. Expand and collect for epsilon. OK, so here is x0. Here is that substituted into x approximate or xa. And here is the differential equation. The differential equation now, the order 1 term is gone. I just have an order epsilon term. So far, nothing. All we have really said is that it is a small perturbation of the harmonic oscillator. Okay. Now we come here and what we do is we pull out the coefficient of epsilon to the 1. That means we are pulling this part out. Okay. And we are doing combined trig because I am seeing some cos squares. So I am doing combined trig. Okay. When I do that combined trick, here is the equation for x1. As we have studied before, we know that there cannot be a cos t and there cannot be a sine t because if there is, then there will be a secular term. That means there is not any possibility of a periodic solution. Since we insist on a periodic solution, therefore we will insist that the coefficients of sine t and sine t and the cos t, these coefficients have to be 0. This one is a nonlinear equation, but we can see that a equals 2 is an answer. This one is easy. If a is not 0, omega 1 has to be 0. So we are adopting those. Once we adopt those, this omega 1 being 0, when I substitute that into omega, so that omega 1 term has gone away. Only omega 2 is there still to be found. I substitute a equals 2 into x a so that I get 2 cos t that part is all right and I substitute it into the differential equation and collect for epsilon okay all right I still have an order epsilon term of course because I haven't found x1 yet all I have done is I have eliminated the possibility of secular terms 
in x1. So now I again I pull out the coefficient of epsilon to the power 1. This is the equation. What I do is as I explained earlier I have no control over x1 of 0. It may be 0 may not be 0. I just call it b and I hope to find it in the next order. But x1 dot is 0. So when I do that this is my answer that b cos t is there. In fact if b turns out to be 0 then this will not be there. That's all. Alright, this x1 um, which is temp1, this is substituted into xa, it is substituted into dea. Since I haven't got any insight into omega, I am not substituting into that. Once I substitute that solution, the order epsilon term is gone and I can now move to order epsilon square. So I move to order epsilon square and I pull out that coefficient. Okay. Because I have done combine trig therefore over here I don't have cos cube and so on so on so I can just pull out the coefficient of sine t and cos t then that set of two equations I solve for b and omega 2 then I substitute into omega and I substitute um, into x and I substitute into the differential equation expand combine trig collect for powers of epsilon when I do that, you see omega 2 has come out to be minus 1 16th and b is equal to 0. That minus 1 16th has been substituted into omega. This is x, the approximate solution so far. And you can see x2 is not yet determined. But x0 and x1 are now fully determined. And this is the differential equation. The order epsilon square term has not yet been um, solved for. Um, because x2 remains to be found. All we have done so far is eliminated secular terms from within x2. So we take epsilon to the power 2, those terms here, and we solve. And now we say x2 at 0, let it be some number c, but x2 dot should be 0, and we solve that. And when we do, here is the parameter c that is still there. It is part of the expansion, remains to be found. We substitute this into xa. So that's okay. We do that and we've got some cube term and over here we still have a c which we will find out later. We substitute the same temp1. This is temp1. This is temp1. We substitute temp1 into dea and expand and collect. Okay, so now we just have an order epsilon cube term here. Very good. Let's take that cube term we take the uh, sorry epsilon cube term we take the third power now um, what we do is once again you see there is a sine t sine 3t sine 7t and so on we pull out the coefficient of sine t and cos t only because they lead to secular terms we solve them for omega 3 and c and now we find that omega 3 is 0 and c is 1 by 96 so that's fine and then um, we see where do we go. So we, we substitute these things into omega, into xa and into the differential equation itself. And once we do that then we have this one left you see and then over here we have found omega up to the third order. That third order is nothing. Here we have found x, x0, x1, x2 and the third order we have not yet found. This third, third order we can find, but it will have an arbitrary constant for the amplitude, which we can keep or not keep or set to zero, whatever it may be. So we have got the answer up to the order that we started with. Okay, We cannot get more information out of it. So I hope you understand this much. Now what we will do is um, we will uh, try to do this in a loop. Okay, So I will come here and start again. I will restart. Okay, now maybe I will even put 4 here. Okay, all right. So then I have my differential equation. I have my assumed solution. I have my differential equation again. The first substitution of cos t and the first substitution here, I am making that. I will keep that. I will not worry about the loop. 
but what I can do is I can suppress the output so let me go back here okay all right here is the first term we have seen this before it's not going to change okay we have seen this part before it's not going to change we have seen this part before it's not going to change and this part but I am going to suppress the output of the differential equation because it is very long then I will come here and substitute B but it is this part from here on I want to write it in a loop okay so I will so let me go for K from um, so what have we solved so far we have from 1 to n 2 okay so I think it may be a good idea to have this at uh, 2 to begin with okay um, and I think it might be a good idea to look at this display for the moment because we are working on this fairly complicated looped program so here you see what has happened is that the solution has been uh, substituted um, for omega 1 and uh, we are uh, picking up the coefficient for epsilon to the power 1 okay so um, all right so let us uh, say temp is equal to the coefficient dea epsilon k okay so that's the first part then I will say temp 1 is equal to D solve temp and the initial condition x k of 0 is equal to some number B which we will have to sort out what it is and we will have D x k of 0 equals 0 for x k of t so we've got the solution for x k then we will say x a is equal to um, substitute temp 1 in x a that's not a problem then we will say d e a is equal to collect combine expand substitute temp 1 d e a that's the expand that's the that's the substitute that's the expand that's the combine that's the correct okay so by when we have done this epsilon to the power 1 is finished okay very good what do we do now so then we say um, this may not be the best way to do it but it's okay so then we will say um, temp 2 is equal to the coefficient in DEA of epsilon to the power k plus 1 and for simplicity let me just say for safety combine trig to make sure there is no difficulty then I say the coefficient in temp 2 of sine t and the coefficient in temp 2 of cos t okay so I generate this list then I say temp 3 is equal to solve that for and this is where um, what 
we are going to solve it for is b and omega k plus 1 and then we will say omega is equal to substitute temp 3 omega and we will say x a is equal to substitute temp 3 x a and we will say d e a temp 3 d e a end so i don't know whether it will run let us see but well, that didn't run so unable to match delimiter there should be a there should be a parenthesis here okay let us see if that works all right so that has worked and this is the um, omega that we have got b remains indeterminate at the highest order so with luck with luck if i try 5 it will work And you see this is the solution now so 2 cos t and then um, here is here is the solution for epsilon square epsilon cube epsilon to the power fourth and it is at the last order that an unknown b is there okay um, and then what we can do or just this display being very long we can suppress this display and we can just look at omega to see what it looks like and then you know if we really want to so that's that's how it goes that's the time period okay um we'll stop here